Hi everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Hi Dustin. Hi John. Hi everyone. Hi Karen. I think I'll just go over here into the shade actually because it's a bit bright. And then... Hi Carla. Morning. I'm just going to have to change over it and put my reading glasses on so I can see the chat. There we are. Oh, hi Sweden. There. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, it's just lifey. Eh? What can you do? Ah, Carrie, I'm just, um, I'm barely holding it together. <laughs> um, I'm trying, but yeah, it was a bit of a shocker. Anyway, it's, it's cool. Aye, so we're in lovely St Andrews, it's beautiful today, the sun is shining. Um, yeah. I'm not actually convinced this tour is going to be the greatest I've ever done, um, but we'll try. <laughs> yeah, just... I should learn just to, to back down and meek, but I can't. It's uh, not my style. Anyway, it happens. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm just upset, that's all. It's just, you know, drunk people, drunk people on holiday and think it's okay. But we're in St Andrews and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. So hopefully everybody else. Hi, Sherry. I hope everyone's having a good time. Ollie, don't, <laughs> I'm really, you need to just, everybody just needs to let it go because I just, I'm finding it really hard just to even. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to have a look at St Andrews, the sun is shining and it's uh, a beautiful day, we've got blue sky, um, and then I'm going to Falkland in about, uh, once we finished, I think I'm at Falkland at half five, which is a beautiful little town in Fife, you'll love it if you've not done it already. And uh, yeah, we'll just, I think we're just going to take it easy, have a wander around and just take in the scenery, enjoy ourselves, yeah? Um, oh, have we started? Sorry, we've started. Um, sorry, right, okay. My name is Sam Thompson, I'm an Edinburgh tour guide and I've been a tour guide for 22 years. I guide all over Scotland, I'm based in Edinburgh. Um, and we are in the beautiful St Andrews today. Um, oh, and the bells are all ringing as well. I don't know if you can hear it. Can you hear it? Oh, it's just stopped. Uh, anyway, the bells are ringing. And uh, we're going to have a look at the, the, the abbey area, the, uh, the castle, and then down to the harbour. We'll have a little walk along the harbour, which is just beautiful. Um, if you want to take postcards, and it's a beautiful day, so you, you really should, <laughs> you use the little round button, that'll take them. There's a little counter that tells you how many you've taken. If you have any, oh, your you're, you're two times great grandfather played golf here, oh, fantastic. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, just feel free to ask them. Um, they'll go into the chat. There are some very experienced voyagers on today. Um, I'm not feeling 100%, so if I miss a question or something, they'll hopefully be able to um, come in and just, just give me a little hand today. Um, and then, yeah, and if I can't actually think what I'm meant to be saying to you now, right, I'm just going to turn it around. <laughs> right, okay, so where we are, um, we're in St Andrews. We're actually inside the cathedral area. Um, we've got a, a reasonable sig signal, so hopefully you're all kind of getting it. The area we're looking at, just coming into, is like the cloisters, um, just in front of us. And there you can see Rules Tower in the background there. Now, St Andrews, the population here is about 18, 18,500. It's a seaside town on the northeast <coughs> of Scotland. So we're on the east coast and we're northeast of Edinburgh. So if anybody's kind of trying to... Sorry, I'm now going to choke. <coughs> sorry, I'm just going to take a little drink of water. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for it on a map, 
um, you just find Edinburgh and then go up the way. Oh, thank you for that, sweetie. Um, now, just remember... Um, oh, excuse me. That you can take postcards. So we are going to get some really lovely ones here. Um, I'll just... Look at that blue sky. Is that not gorgeous? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a dry throat. Now... St Andrews is known today for golf and its university um, and the university was founded in 1413 and it was once the largest religious settlement in Scotland and it still remains, uh, still retains rather, its medieval layout so it's, it's, um, it's got a brilliant shape to it <coughs> basically, if you imagine my three fingers in my hand can't get the pinky to go. So you've got North Street, South Street and Market Street in the middle. That's what um, the original uh, St Andrews was like. And we can see parts of the wall here. So we have a, a precinct wall. Hi Lance. Hi. Um, thank you everybody. Um, so here you can see part of the precinct. <coughs> Sorry, I'm got, I've got a, a, a dry bit in my throat now just here and we're looking along so that's one of the streets, and then on the other side you've got one of the you've got the other street. So it's a really easy town to walk around St Andrews. <sighs> Sorry, <I've laughs> oh, couldn't make it up. I'm choking, choking on nothing. So the penned gate is what we were looking at just there. So oh, that's right into the sun now for you. So that's the penned gate. Um, and that was basically the main entrance into the cathedral precinct and quite a lot of the precinct wall actually survives here so you can see quite a lot of it, we're quite lucky um, but we'll just have a look as we walk down here there has been a problem with Historic Scotland sites because they were closed for the two years um, they didn't get the usual inspections and things that they were supposed to get and <clears throat> Historic Scotland actually did a a sort of a survey, a random survey, and found loose masonry, which then obviously created a bit of a panic because when masonry is falling from that height, it, it's going to do damage. So that's why a lot of this is fenced off at the moment until it can be physically inspected. And it has to be physically inspected, touched by hand. Um, so yeah, but I'll just let you have a little look. You can see at the bottom here, we've got round arches. So that's what the style like when it originally started. You had these round arches. But as we move through time, you start to get these pointed arches. Um. Oh, we will go and see the castle as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely take us down there. Now, straight ahead of us, we can see St. Rule's Tower. And that was built around 1130. And it was the first place of worship for the, the newly arrived Augustinian canon. So the Palace of Holyrood House is Augustinian ca canon as well. Isn't it gorgeous? Just the light and everything. The sky's beautiful. Now, it's 33 metres high, which I think is 108 feet um, tall. And it's sitting at the eastern end of St Andrews, um, St Andrews two main streets. I was trying to describe to you there. Now, there's a really, it's a strange collection of ruins we've got here, um, but it's it's and they're a little bit confusing when we, when you first look at them, but once you realise how they were built and things, it kind of gets a bit easier to to see it. And this was the largest church in medieval Scotland, and yeah, I can advise you not to be climbing on things like that. It's not it's not really appropriate. But here we go, we just look down, you're looking down one of the wells, um, yes. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to get us over here, and what I'll do is I'll walk, I'll walk along this way, I think the signal's been good to us today, so we'll go over and then we'll kind of look back at the sides of it here as we go around. Oh, and there's the toilet. But here you can see. I love these old signs. So this is the vaulted undercroft of the range on the west side of the cloister. Right, the signal's just gone, so I'll move away from it in case that's what's causing the issue. The trouble with these buildings is the walls are so thick. But I really wanted you to see this sign. Oh, <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Right, so hopefully you can see the sign and take a screenshot. 
So you can see where the cloister is, that green area with the trees, that's, um, that's where we are. You can see you are here. So you can see the size, it was absolutely enormous. Right, and I'm just going to bring it up so you can see the central tower. That's part of it there. Um, it would be over here and then all the way back. So, it, you know, a really good size. And it was, as you can see, it was that kind of cross shape, that T. Right. So, I'll just let you have a little look and you see sort of an artist's impression of what the, the dining hall would do. Oh, there is a wasp just landed on my phone. <laughs> right, one wasp I can cope with. Like, off you go now. Off you go. Come on. <sighs> go away. <laughs> there, there, there. I think he's gone. Either that or he's on, still on the back. Ah, oh, no, he's still on the... Oh, ah, oh, duck. Just... <laughs> right, I'll just keep walking. Oh, no, he's definitely loving me. Right, little friend, you need to go away. So, yes. Anyway, where were we? Now, St. Rule's Tower, which we can see just in the distance here, that was basically a beacon for um, pilgrims heading to the shrine of St. Andrew. Um, the cathedral was begun in 1160. And here's another well. You know how, oh, that's quite a deep one. No water in it now, but it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it, the, the work was begun by Bishop Arnold. Um, and here we can see the under, sort of the undercroft and the refectory, the eating hall. Uh, it's built in red stone, which indicates it was largely rebuilt by the Marquis of Butte. So the stone here is different, so I'll try and let you see the colour of it. So if you look here, you can see it's red. Okay? So that's a different kind of stone to what is straight in front of us where you have this lovely sort of creamy, orangey uh, stone. Now work continued for the next 150 years when it came to building um, the cathedral and it stalled in 1272 and that was by a huge storm which actually blew down the west front um, and then it was also stalled by the Wars of Independence. Although it's a ruin now, uh, a large area of this can, is actually surviving. We're very, very lucky. We've got most, you know, you can see the footprint here. Um, so you know how big it was. But I'm just going to quickly show you. I can't go in. Um, plus they're closed for lunch between 12 and 1. So that's good to note. But here you can see St Andrew's Cathedral. It's open all year round. And they have like a little museum uh, inside. So if you wanted to go in, there's quite a lot to... Uh, yeah, it blew it down. Um, we're right on the North Sea, so it's quite stormy here. Um, now you can see how nature, the wind and the weather can affect um, sandstone here. We've got quite a lot of it that's quite worn away, but the colours are gorgeous. I love white sandstone, I really do. Um, it's, it's a beautiful one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an Adam shot for you. So everyone close your eyes. Okay, now it's giving me two seconds. Right, there, how's that? Is that working? So we're getting this lovely view of St. Rule's Tower. Okay, I'm just going to step up, close your eyes. Right, open them again, there you are, we're fine. Now the cathedral was finally dedicated um, in 1318. Now in here, this, oh, <laughs> come on Gimbal, other way. Oh, Gimbal's going for a little wonder. Wait a second, we'll bring it back. There we are. In here, we've got lots of old, um, beautifully decorated stones, uh, gravestones and things. And we've also got parts of the sarcophagus as well. Um, so, right. Sorry, I'm just going to have to... The Gimbal's gone off to the side. Uh, now... It was dedicated in the presence of King Robert the Bruce. Uh, St Andrews is the patron saint of Scotland. Um, I know the gimbal's just naughty. Um, right, but here we've still got, you know, there's still more. It's a huge site. Um, I'm just going to bring you over here because the signal is still with us. Um, but you can see the red sandstone here. 
Um, so this is a later build. Now, yeah. Now it is. It's still the one of the largest. Well, it is the largest religious settlement in Scotland. Um, and we'll just show you this little bit back here, and you can see where they've got some work going on because they've had to reinforce the wall here, where the trees are, and then we're looking down. I'm not going to take us any further round because I, I know we've got limited time, but I just wanted you to see this, the size of the site. And there you've got St. Rule's Tower as well. Right, so, um, the East Gable in the Presbytery housed the, housed the relic of St. Andrew's. So we've got arm bones of the saint here. Oh, right. I'm going to have to give Gimbal a serious talking to. There. Yeah. I've got a new Gimbal coming This to replace this new Gimbal. Um, anyway, yeah. Now the soft... The, the, some of the features we've still got, we've got like the south wall of the nave, um, the west front, um, we've got the cloisters, the chapter house, the undercroft, um, which is now the museum we've just had a little look at there. So there's, there's quite a lot of the structure here. So we're very, very lucky. A lot of the stones that you, a lot of the missing stone has actually been used to build houses um, in, <laughs> in St Andrews. So yeah. Now, I'm just going to quickly take you over and show you one more board um, and then I'll, I'll take us back the way. Well, there's lots of uh, famous people buried here, especially to do with golf and things. But I'm just going to show you this. This is the bottom of the tower. And if you look up above the door there, you can see the window and then you can see the triangular scar in the stone. Okay, so when I let you see this picture, you'll see that's where the roof was joined on. <laughs> I know, it's just, it's crazy when the gimbals go rogue. But what can you do? <laughs> um, now, they're, they're very worried about the gravestones being unstable as well, so that's caused um, some issues. Right, I'm just going to leave that one. This is a big queue. Right, so the other thing we've got here um, is we've, st we've got, actually got some of the um, stone kists and things that were um, st basically stone coffins that the, the cannon would be buried in. Um, so I'll just bring you over here just so that you can, you can see what they are. But uh, yeah, right. Yeah, no, there's not. You could actually spend quite a lot of time here just just exploring. So this is one of the stone kists coffin. It would have had a, a lid on it. I'll show you one in a second. Um, so over here, you can see we have another four, and these ones, this one of them has the lid still attached to it. And we're in the chapter house at the moment, so this was under the chapter house floor. Right. I'm just going to let you have a little look at the information board and that way when you're looking at your postcards back you'll be able to oh isn't that pretty take that picture that's gorgeous <laughs> oh it's lovely today and look at the detail here let the light adjust and you can see all the, the individual little seats and here if you want to take a quick screenshot you can see an artist's impression of what this would have looked like. So under the floor is where the burials would have been. And we're in the chapter house. I think I already said that, but I just think he said it and that's where we are. Okay, now how do we... Yeah, we'll go this way. Let's try not to get too carried away in one place and then take up all the time here and miss um, the, the harbour and the castle. So I'll just take us over. I want to show you some of the original floor tiles as well. So we're in the South Quiet Isle at the moment. Um, and I'll just take you over to this, this little um, board again so that you can take, if any of you want to take a little screenshot of where what we're looking at or about to look at. Okay. Now look at the size of these columns. 
they're huge absolutely enormous oh thank you yeah yeah I'm, I'm fine I'm still a bit upset but I'm okay um, you know people are just stupid and yeah I've never been one to uh, to, to run away and that is the problem plus when you're surrounded you can't <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Right, what I wanted to show you, they are very bright, those. Um, yeah, is over here. Um, hopefully, oh no, they can't, no, no, there's some that are open. Right, so underneath, here, okay. So under these boxes, and I'm going to try and open one up. You just bear with me for a second while I do it. We have the original floor. The floor tiles. Is that not amazing? Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's quite a large stretch over there. Would you be able to close that for me after? Oh, oh thank you. There. So, yeah. So, it's, it's a... I mean, here we're standing. We're only kind of... Uh, we've got, what, three quarters of the church in front of us? It's massive. Absolutely massive. And it, it's just amazing that... You know, the footprint is still here. You can see the line of the walls. They've actually um, outlined. So here you can see the nave running down. Um, we've got the, the north transept just here. So you can kind of make the, the low stonework out. And you've got the east and then Rose Tower there. It's just it's it's such a um, it's such a beautiful ruin, and there's so much you can still learn from it, you know. But here, I mean, <laughs> it's the size of the pillars; they just blow me away. Um, when you look at the oh, actually, that's quite pretty. Look at the way the lights doing that; isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Anyway, and then we've got yet another wall, a well rather, well, uh, just on the side here. So I'm going to take us out and we'll head over to um, have a look at the, the, the castle. It is, it is. And uh, before golf and before the university, you know, this place was about religion. And it's really um, funny how over time things change. Um, and obviously then it became... Well, to be fair, whenever you've got large religious settlements, you've usually got some sort of education going on anyway. Um, but yeah, and then it becomes the university and then golf takes over and a lot of people don't realise that St Andrews ha it has, it might be small, but it, it, it packs quite a punch. It's got a lot to, to see and get interested in. Oh, sorry, have I just... Uh, yeah, no, you definitely do have to come back. Oh, you're coming over. Oh, excellent. Yeah, you'll love it. And just in front of us, we've got a war memorial. Um, but I'll just, I'll turn around one last time just to let you have a little look at the site, because it is enormous. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you definitely have to visit it, Lexi. It's, I love St Andrews. And just over here, when we get through the gate, um, on this side, there's actually a lovely, um, this, is, this is North Street, there's a lovely little um, museum here, um, all about the history of St Andrews, and you go in and it shows you what, one room's like this shop, another room is like a house, there's old cinema seats and all sorts of interesting stuff, and it also takes you into the back garden where you've got lots of beautiful plants and things growing, and uh, there's a double privy. Um, you go in and there's two seats. <laughs> Quite strange, but mm, whatever. Uh, so hopefully the signal... Yep, the signal's behaving, so we're having a nice little... Uh, yeah, I, go, <laughs> I had to giggle when I saw the double privy. <laughs> but anyway, so 
Oh, they're straight ahead of us. We've got the water, it's beautiful. Aye. See, water makes everything okay. <laughs> right. No, really, you don't. Um, a lot of play, a lot of people when they do usually like it's day trips they do to St Andrews, and by the you never get enough time because a lot of the time you don't realise how much there is to see, and that can be, you know, the problem because you only allocate oh one day it's enough to drive from Edinburgh to St Andrews or Stirling or whatever, and then you realise there's lots. Right. Now, John Knox actually preached um, in St Andrews. He did a very fiery sermon. He was very good at them. Look at the beach down there. Um, and the cathedral was cleansed as a result. Uh, and then in 1561, it was abandoned and replaced by a parish church as the, the chief place of worship. And then St Rule's Tower was left to fall into ruin. Um, yeah, and St. Rule was also known as St. Reg... I can never say it, Regulus? Uh, something like that, anyway. Um, and uh, he fled Greece mid-300s and brought bones of St. Andrews with him. Um, so that's why we have the relics here. But look at that boot, beach. Isn't that gorgeous? You want to come back? Yeah. So from here you get quite a nice... You've got the castle, uh, and you can see a huge part of it's missing. Um, the water is very, very calm. It's actually lovely just now. I'm just before I get to the castle, I'm just going to. We are coming back this way, but I'm just going to show you while we can see it. If you look in the water just below us here, kind of middle of the screen, you can almost see the wall. There's actually a rectangle shape here, and that's like the paddling pool. So that's a safe little place. Work is getting in the way. Yeah. <laughs> right, now once we get to the castle the, the um the signal does tend to drop a little bit, so we'll just we'll do what we can. Such a beautiful day. Isn't that gorgeous? Um so I think I'm probably just gonna take us to about here um, just to avoid signal drops I might try and get us a bit closer um, now St Andrew's Castle is what we're looking at now and this was the official um, residence of Scotland's leading bishop in the Middle Ages um, it's, its size is basically telling you that uh, you know the power and wealth of the important churchmen, it's showing you how powerful and wealthy they were that they could build something of this size. Right, so I'm just checking the signal as we go because I don't want to lose it. Now Bishop Arnold began building the cathedral in the 1160s and Bishop Roger began building the new castle as his official residence in the 11, well, 1189 he started to build this Oh, um, we're not going to have to see a latrine with the water, no. Uh, which castle? Um, quite a few of them. Black Ness Castle has it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, witches, witches all over Scotland had a really, really hard time. Um, a lot of them were misunderstood. A lot of them were um, women who knew herbal remedies, who were midwives. Basically, anybody that has knowledge that could damage your uh, power uh, power craze um, could be accused of being a witch and then they would they would be you know burned at the stake along with martyrs and things religious martyrs um, now I'm just going to show you <laughs> oh sorry sweetheart right just here uh, the signal's gone oh no it's come back so here you can see it says George Wishart sorry 1513 to 1546 powerful protestant preacher um, who was betrayed to Cardinal Beaton brought here, um, put in the sea tower and condemned for heresy and burnt at the stake on the 1st of March. Um, the le oh, there's, there's the, the lettering on the roadway marks where he died. So I'm just going to show you that. Hopefully you managed to get a picture of it. 
Um, I honestly can't wait to get my new gimbal. Now, where is it? It's under one of these cars, I think. Oh, the signal's just dropped completely. So, there. Right, so that's the sig that's George Wishart there. So that's where he was burned. Um, I'm not going to be able to get... It's just totally disappeared. Um, but I'll just quickly, whilst I seem to have a decent bit, I'm going to let you see the front. Now you can see it's built defensively. There's a dry moat in there. So you can see the bridge walking over to it. So that's the dry moat. Uh, there are tunnels. There's tunnels and counter tunnels. So if I can, I'm going to try and zoom in here. Do you see the entrance to the tunnel? You can't actually go down there. Uh, into the tunnel. It's quite a strange thing. There is a ventilation shaft at the other end, so it's not that bad. <laughs> oh, that's where his George Wishart's initials are on the ground, uh, showing you the place that he was actually um, burned at the stake. Um, and then if we look at the front here, I'm going to try and zoom in because I can't get you any closer because of the signal. But you can see there's some beautiful detail there on the front of the building. Um, yeah, I, it's unfortunately the signal just disappears on me, so I don't want to, to risk losing you all again. Um, what I'll do next time I'm here, I'll take a photograph of it and I'll pop it in as a post an image, and then that way at least you've, you've got you can see what it is I'm trying to show you. Um, now, St Andrew's Castle suffered quite a lot of damage during the Wars of Independence, which was sort of 1296 to. Uh, onwards in the 1300s um, and it was, it was substantially rebuilt um, by Bishop Walter Trail around 1385 to about 1400. Now the bishops of St Andrew gained responsibility for the, the Scottish church uh, in the late medieval period so they were very very powerful men. Now in 1801 the Great Hall which we can't see anymore um, it actually basically collapsed into the sea and we lost other parts of the, the castle uh, to the sea in through that period in the 1800s and eventually they built a seawall in 1886 to try and save what was left of the castle so that's why it is so ruinous well it's ruinous anyway but we've lost quite a bit of this to the sea you know nature takes things back oh Donotter Castle, Catherine, yes, I'm, I'm doing that for you, don't worry. Um, what I'm going to be doing is, in the wintertime in Scotland, Mother Nature wins, I know, in the wintertime in Scotland, it's um, very dark um, most of the time, so from about half past nine in the morning, we have daylight till about half past three in the afternoon, um, which isn't conducive to doing tours when most of the audience is asleep at that time or, or at work or whatever so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to go to places and video it as if I'm giving you a tour um, and then play it to you at night when I'm at home um, as if we're doing it live so it's we'll be watching the video together but the way I set it up you can't you don't actually realise that it's a video because you don't see the computer or anything. And then we'll talk and um, discuss what we're looking at as if we were there at the time. Um, and that way, I, th I think that's the best compromise I could come up with, with ways to be able to show you things. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one because of the time zones, you know. Um, and I know last year when I tried to show you things in the dark, it was, I could see them, but there wasn't as much thing, as many places lit up as there used to be. And it made it quite frustrating for viewers because they're having to try and work out what it is I'm showing them in the dark. Um, uh, so I think, I think it's a good kind of option. And Monday night, my time, 10 o'clock in the evening, I'll be doing um, a sort of, um, series where every Monday night at 10 I'm going to put on an as home and as live tour um, of castles and things and that way we've always got something to see on a Monday night
<laughs> yeah, I'll stay dry. I'll stay dry. You don't have to bring your your squishy bottles with you and spray mist yourself, so you can <laughs> pretend you're there with me in the rain. <laughs> oh, yeah. And to be fair, the good thing about doing it at home is I don't need to worry about people around me outside. So that also helps. <laughs> yeah. So we're just uh, we're heading over towards the harbour, but I'm just gonna just have you a little look from the distance here. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the clouds, the sky's beautiful. I know, we are so lucky. We are very, very lucky that we've got such a, a variety of colours and we're coming into, the leaves are beginning to change, which is just beautiful because you're getting these reds and golds and yeah. Right, I'm just going to take a wee drink, if you don't mind, I'll just be a second. Um, yeah. Now, I, I had a, ch a couple of people suggested um, that the darker side tours um, might be um, a good idea if I went out and recorded them and did them as, as live uh, in the winter so that the rain and the wind and things are not going to disrupt them um, and if people think that's a good idea then I'm quite happy to do that um, just to avoid you know the weather getting in the way but I really like wandering about showing you stuff so it's quite hard because <laughs> uh, yeah now you can just see the harbour, a little bit of the harbour wall there, we are going to, uh, thank you Lee, um, we are going to see a lot more in a second, I'm just walking back along the side of the wall, um, and you can see, over the wall from here, you can see where we began, are we, well, yeah, we'll be safer, but it's a sad day when, yeah, the gate is open, <laughs> So there you are, the side gate's open. Right. It's nice when that. The last time I was here it was still shut, so it's quite good. Yeah. Well see that's it. Um and I'm I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not usually I don't usually get scared but Sometimes you know that you're mortal and you might have been, you know, there's 10 of them, so what do you do? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're coming up to St Mary's Church and it's also known as St Mary's on the Rock um, because it's sticking out on a ro rocky promontory. <laughs> uh, there's, there's people sitting in it, but never mind. We can still kind of get the shape of it. Now, this is the earliest collegiate church in Scotland. And it was built in 1123. Um, and it was the permanent home of the Chaldee. Uh, and they were an order of Celtic monks who rejected the new monastic order of the Middle Ages. Um, so it was an older style. Um, and they didn't really uh, go along with the, the changes. But there's quite, it's a bit faded, but you get the idea of the shape. So if we stand here, you can kind of see it's T-shaped, cross-shaped again. But obviously much, much smaller. So that's just letting you see what it looked like. Uh, Julia, I'm, I, I was fine until I realised I had a postcard tour tonight at 8 o'clock in the old town and I just about, I, I nearly melted. <laughs> But anyway, it'll be fine. My husband's going to come with me. Um, so yeah. So here we are. You can see the outline of what the whole thing would have been. And as we stand here, compared to the cathedral we've just seen, this is a very uh, petite, but a reasonable sized church um, for its time. Now, in 1249, the Kildee became the first college of secular priests in Scotland, and the college thrived for about 300 years until the Protestant Reformation um, that took place in the, the 1560s. So I'm just going to let you have a little look at the size. Now, 
Um, so yeah, um, it's it's just such a beautiful day, you know. And then if we look around here, you're going to see we're going to end up down at the harbour there. So it's fantastic. Now. <laughs> This chapel that we're standing in was actually regarded as a royal chapel. Um, so it was a royal chapel, uh, and it re because of that it enjoyed the protection of the king and the bishops between the 1200s and the 1500s. And the base of the ho high altar in the choir you can see just ahead of us here. So you've just got the base there. Now get over onto the path. And just let you can see the cannon and things. I love the benches here because they're wavy like waves. So if you look at the bench just there, you can see it's not flat, it wave, it's got waved um, wood. I think that's quite cool. Right. So St Andrew's Harbour, which is where we're coming down to now, um, it was basically an estuary um, formed in a t the tidal mouth of the Kynes Burn. Um, and at its peak, it became three. Well, basically, it birthed three hundred vessels. It could take three hundred boats in its heyday. Now, the fishing harbour is mentioned early in twelve twenty-two. Just let you have a little look down there. So, I mean, there's a record of it, and there's another record of it in thirteen sixty-three. So, it's definitely been here for a huge amount of time. Um, no doubt the estuary has been used as a natural shelter since the earliest days of navigation. So we have on our coastline, we've got natural um, sort of little shapes that give you little harbours where you can get shelter anyway. And a lot of them then eventually become bigger uh, harbours and things. As it stands today, you've got the pier, which is 880 feet long and aligned west-east. Um, let me just see, I'm going to... Sorry, the, the hill's getting a bit steeper, so I'm concentrating on getting down it without falling. Oh, dear. Yes. Right, two seconds. There. Well, so, basically, the, the main thing here now we have is leisure and fishing. And that's what it's used for today. Um, the har It's got the... It's owned by the St Andrew's Harbour Trust. Um, the harbour basically fell into disuse once the railways um, arrived. Now, the main pier was extended in 1656 using stone from the cathedral. Um, so yes, the cathedral was not safe. Um, uh, and it's along this pier, actually, that um, the university students traditionally walk after Sunday service at St Salvatore's uh, Chapel in North Street. So on a Sunday after the service, you will see students walking along here. Um, I'll go along a little bit just so you can you can kind of see it and we'll look back along uh, the harbour and then I'll take you to the other end. I'm not going to climb up there though because I will fall. <laughs> but I'm not, I'll just take you a little way in. But, oh, isn't this gorgeous? Look at the sun. It's just making everything really pretty. It's, uh, it's difficult to be sad when it looks this gorgeous, you know? No, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> be all right if I fell in the water, I can swim, but uh, no my luck, I'd land on the rocks. Look at the beach. Can you see the beach in the distance there? Sometimes you'll see people surfing and wakeboarding, I think you call it. Or is it paddleboarding? Uh, water is very healing. No, you're, you're totally right. It is. So I'm just going to walk us along. Um, I'm thinking it's about 14, about 14 or 15 degrees. I'm absolutely roasting. I've got my jumper on and a scarf, which... Um, I'm feeling quite quite warm with and that's just looking back and then from here uh, I'll just come over so you can get the see it we've got this beautiful view of the castle again isn't it gorgeous right um, just bring us around we'll just have a little wonder uh, yeah so um So they developed a sort of a 
Well, the fishing and agriculture in the area sort of developed in the, the 19th century um, and the, the, the town's harbour once came back to life. And once we go through the agricultural revolution and they start realising if they add um, lime to the soil, they can um, help with the pH balance and things. Uh, and that's when they start to, more agriculture and things starts to be important in the area because originally Fife was mainly sort of fishing um, that was the, the most important part. So, but centuries ago, it was called a beggar's mantle fringed with gold, meaning that the gold fringe was all the fishing harbours, and the mantle, which is a hood, was the beggar's part. So there wasn't a lot um, that they could do with the middle part of it. Yes, there's a beach in the distance. It's gorgeous. This There's a beach this way, and there's also a beach at the far end. And the sands at the far end is where they filmed the opening scenes of Chariots of Fire. Um, and it must have been absolutely freezing. <laughs> but yeah. So there was herring boats, there was coal, there was iron, there was potatoes, all being taken out through, through the harbour uh, at that point in time. But yeah, you've got the little lobster pots or crab creels or whatever these are. I'm not very technical. Actually... Let's see, how's that for a picture? What are we thinking? Is that okay? I think that's quite nice for a postcard. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's... It's, it's beautiful and we're going to go up a bit. Hopefully the signal will be all right. I'll take you Chariots of Fire. Yeah, it was filmed here. Um, the... the I, I mean, it was filmed in other places as well. Edinburgh played a part in it as well. Um, but the opening scene where they're running along the beach, oh man, the North Sea, and they were getting wet when they were filming that. And then you've got uh, Golden Acre, which is in Edinburgh, and when Eric Liddell was doing one of his races, he fell and he got up and he ran. Um, that was filmed there. Absolutely beautiful. So... Um, Yeah, that's right, Jim. It's at the f we're at one end of St Andrews, so we're uh, we're at the opposite end to where that beach is, and it's it's gorgeous. So the beach runs along. You've got the golf courses running by the side of it. Um, I think Martin um, does a tour of the golf course in that area, um, but to be honest, there's so much to see at this end. It was like trying not to. I didn't want to run from one place to another and just go boom, boom, boom. I wanted to try and show everybody, um, you know, one part. And then at another time, if people want to, I'm quite happy to go to the other end and we can talk about the witches and, and golf and things. Although I will tell you now, I am not an expert on golf by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but if that beach has a decent signal, which I can signal test, it could be a nice one just for a walk on the beach with me, you know, just for the relaxation of it. Yes, they do, during the Open. And see the Open, um, the 150-year uh, anniversary one that they just had. They put a fake 18th hole in so that people could stand on the putting green and get their pictures taken. Um, and they had the stands up for months before it was actually needed to be used. But it was fantastic. The atmosphere was great. Um, I had some people that were, you know, golfers and wanted to, to come and uh, see it. So I'm just going to stand here. And we're, I don't know if I'm quite getting it all in there, but at least you're getting some of from the other end. So we're looking, we'd go through that bridge, lifts up, and then you go through. Is that a lift up or is it a swing over? I can't remember now. I'm thinking it lifts up, split in the middle. Right, okie dokie. I think I've, have I gone over my time? I don't know, I can't remember. My Facebook profile is... Excuse me, Sam Thompson, T H O M S O N, and then in brackets, tour guide. Because um, Sam's a fairly uh, common name, and then Thompson is one of the most common in the world. So, <laughs> well, in Scotland anyway. I was there in the summer, and there was a young. <gasps> yes! Well, I was here about a month ago, and the section over here, they had, like, it must have been a, a, a school. Uh, like a, I don't know what you call it, a water school or whatever. And they had all these kids with the life jackets and everything on trying to do the, 
you know when you stand on the board and you have a paddle they were doing that is that paddle boarding or wakeboarding is that, I can never remember what it's called but anyway it looked really really it did look fun um, and the little beach that we can't see because it's it's over that way that little beach um, we were we could because the waves were really big there was people surfing uh, paddle boarding thank you thank you um, so it was really it was it was amazing to see and I was like if, if it wasn't so far away from home I would I would ask the girls if they wanted to give it a bash because it did it looked like fun um, and, and they like the water uh, as common as Smith and Jones pretty much yeah George <laughs> I know now I'm just going to turn around one last time just to let you see there you can see if we walked up there we'd be having a great view of the cathedral and you can just see St. Rule's Tower and you can see part of the the wall that we saw at the very beginning so you can see that here and then oh sorry oh thank you thank you for that Kerry um, and <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to be sexist but it's only a men's toilet that they say ladies don't have one <laughs> <laughs> I think the ladies are in a different place, but anyway. But even when you look at this wall, I'm going to just come out the sun, there's no cars coming. So if you look at the wall, the detail on it's incredible. Um, here you've got one of the little niche that would be used for uh, statuettes, that kind of thing. And then if we look along, you can see there's this... I'm going to zoom in. Okay, I'm going to zoom in and hopefully not get run down. Uh, you can see the corbeling, so you've got this, these um, sort of knee shaped things poking out and then you can see this round part where there would have been some sort of like tower or pepper pot or something like that so although there isn't a huge amount of this left what is left is pretty spectacular and I mean even here when we look at this bit sorry I'm just going to zoom back out because that'll make you sick but when we look at this bit here you can see the bottom end of a gun loop so you can see the slit the top part's changed there's a new bit of stone in there but you can see it's been filled in because it's no longer needed and now we've got the toilet and then even when you look at build when you look at walls it's amazing what you can find so here as we look at this you can see the key stone so you've got the keystone there and this is where there had been there's the lintel and there's the opening for the window and then the windowsill and then here you've got a door and there's another window so i i just love I love rocks to be fair and it's amazing once you start you know once you let your your eyes start to tune into things you can really tell a lot about you might not be able to tell the whole history of it but you can see that over time it's not been destroyed because it's no longer fashionable or useful it's been reworked because a lot of work went into building it in the first place and I just I just love that I think it's amazing anyway sorry I think I've gone right over my time Thank you very much for everyone that came along. Thank you for the support. Um, I am sorry if I scared anyone last night. Um, trust me, you weren't half as scared as I was. And uh, yeah, yeah. I have a postcard tour tonight at eight o'clock that I'm not going to cancel because I'm not going to let them win. <laughs> so, right, I'm going to go because I'm going to start crying again. So anyway, thank you everyone that came along. I really appreciate it. Right, bye.